Welcome to today's talk on securing Microsoft 365 with Elastic. My name is Eric Oy, and I'm the Director of Security and Research at Ironvine Security. We are a cybersecurity company specializing in technical risk management solutions for public and private sector enterprises. This is the agenda for my talk today. I'll give an overview of cloud security and explain why we want to capture Microsoft 365 and Azure logs. From there, I'll walk through how to set this up and show some example Kibana queries and visuals. Finally, I'll share some custom dashboards you can use to get started with. Often with cloud services, we as customers assume that our cloud provider is solely responsible for the security of our instance. We typically believe there's little to no logging or auditing capabilities available to us. That everything is simply secured without us having to worry. This of course is not quite true. It turns out that cloud security is a shared responsibility. While cloud providers may be responsible for securing the underlying infrastructure layer, tenants are responsible for securing the application layer. And though Microsoft 365 and Azure are two of the most popular cloud services, many organizations are unaware that they generate detailed audit logs. In this talk, we'll discuss why we'd wanna capture these logs, we'll walk through how to send these logs to our Elastic cluster, and then develop our own queries and visualizations to secure and monitor our environments. So why capture these logs? There are several reasons for doing this. First is security. Capturing these logs will help us meet the shared responsibility of securing our cloud environment. Logs give us visibility and insight into our environment, both the benign and the malicious. Understanding what is happening in our environment will help us more easily identify anomalous activity. Second is for compliance. Oftentimes we're required to enable and store our logs for a certain period of time to meet compliance requirements. Third is to centralize logs. For anyone who manages or secures Microsoft 365 or Azure, you'll know that there are a dizzying number of ways to search for the information you're looking for. Wouldn't it be great to centralize these logs into a one single location? What if you want to quickly correlate these logs with other systems and security telemetry that you're already collecting? Fourth is to investigate alerts. While Microsoft includes a wealth of canned alerts out of the box, investigating the alerts isn't always easy. More often than not, our investigations will require a deeper dive into the raw logs to properly determine the nature of an event. Finally, logs can help identify notable activity. Sometimes there are events that are unique or considered notable to your team. Someone sharing a particular file externally, a login from an unexpected location, or a suspicious user agent. It's just something that you want to know about that might not already exist as a canned alert. So now that we understand the importance of logging, let's start by setting up Microsoft 365 to generate audit logs. First, we'll need to enable audit logging if it isn't already. Do this by navigating to compliance.microsoft.com and clicking on audit in the left navigation menu. Next, register an application in Azure AD to collect and pull logs from. We'll wanna note the application or client ID, the directory or tenant ID, the tenant name, and the client secret for setting up the FileBeat module. Next, let's set up FileBeat. We'll assume that you already have FileBeat installed on a system. If not, first download from Elastic and install it using Elastic's Quick Start Guide. Note that although Microsoft has since rebranded Office 365 to Microsoft 365, at the time of this talk, Elastic still refers to this module as the Office 365 module. Okay, so as a user with appropriate permissions, run the command FileBeat modules enable O365 to enable the 365 module. Then run FileBeat setup-e to set up the 365 assets. Now in your favorite text editor, open the FileBeat O365 configuration file and populate the application or client ID, the directory or tenant ID, tenant name, and client secret values from the app that we'd registered in the previous slide. On my Linux system, this file is located in slash Etsy, slash FileBeat, slash modules.d, slash o365.yml. Save the file when you're done. Now restart FileBeat to enable the new module. On my system, this is sudo system control restart FileBeat. FileBeat should now periodically pull Microsoft 365 for new logs and automatically format them into Elastic Common Schema to make them easily searchable using standardized field names. For detailed instructions, refer to the Elastic.co link in the slide. This will also include instructions on how to set up the Microsoft 365 audit logging that we covered in the previous slide. Okay, so now let's set up Azure to send logs. This process is a bit more involved in setting up the 365 logs. We'll need to first create an Azure resource group and then an Azure event hub, a blob storage account, and then configure Azure to stream the logs we want to this hub. We don't have time to go in depth on each step, but Elastic's documentation provides direct links to the relevant Microsoft support pages to set this up. With that completed, we'll want to note the event hub name, the connection string, 
the storage account and storage account key for setting up the FileBeat module. Okay, so now let's walk through how to capture Azure logs with FileBeat. Again, as a user with appropriate permissions, run FileBeat modules enable Azure to enable the Azure module. Then run FileBeat setup E to set up the Azure FileBeat assets. Now, in your favorite text editor, again, open the FileBeat Azure configuration file and populate the event hub name, the connection string, the storage account, and storage account key that were created earlier. On my Linux system, this file is located in slash Etsy slash FileBeat slash modules.d slash Azure.yml. Save the file when you're done. Now restart FileBeat to enable the new module. Again, on my system, this is sudo system control restart FileBeat. As we saw with the 365 setup, FileBeat should now periodically pull Azure for new logs and automatically format them into Elastic Common Schema. And again, for detailed instructions, refer to the Elastic.co link in the slide. This will also include instructions on how to set up the Azure audit logging that we covered in the previous slide. Okay, so now that we've got our 365 and Azure data flowing into our cluster, it's time for some fun. Let's navigate to Elastic Sim. In the left navigation menu, click on Overview under Security, and then click on Rules under Detect. Let's first filter for Microsoft 365 rules by clicking on Tags and selecting Microsoft 365. Select all the rules in the filtered results and click on Bulk Actions to activate Selected. Then uncheck Microsoft 365 and repeat this for the Azure tag. With that, we've now set up Elastic Sim to monitor our Microsoft 365 and Azure cloud environments for anomalous behavior using its out-of-the-box detection rules. Feel free to browse through these rules to get an idea of the activity you can now identify. So now that we've checked out some of Elastic Sim's pre-built rules for 365 and Azure, uh, while these will give us a good starting point, let's try to write a couple of simple but useful search queries on our own to familiarize ourselves with the data. First, we'll search for authentication failures to our 365 environment. To do this, we'll run a query that focuses our search on 365 authentication logs that have an event.action of user login failed. So in the Kibana KQL search bar, we'll type event.module colon 0365 and event.category colon authentication and event.action colon user login failed. With these filtered logs, we can now investigate further to determine if the logins are malicious, the service and user agent involved, and where they originated from, including IP and geolocation. Now let's search for logins considered risky by Azure Active Directory. To do this, we'll run a query that focuses our search on Azure logs and have a risk state of at risk. So again, we'll type in our search bar, event.module colon Azure and azure.signinlogs.properties.risk underscore state colon at risk. We can now determine why a sign-in was considered risky, the reason a particular login might have failed, and additional details. Now let's try creating some visuals. We can do this easily with Kibana Lens. Open the left navigation menu and under analytics, click on visualize library. Next, click on create visualization and under new visualization, choose lens. Let's create a visual for authentication status by user agent. In the search bar, we'll search for authentication logs by typing event.module colon 0365 and event.category colon authentication. And then we'll configure the following options within lens. We'll set our visual type as pi, and we'll slice the data by top 10 values of event.action and top 10 values of user underscore agent.name. And we'll size this by count. We now have a high level overview of the user agents that successfully and unsuccessfully authenticated into our environment. We can filter and drill down to look for suspicious user agents, especially ones with high failure rates or suspicious names. Now let's look at file activity over time. In the search bar, we'll search for the file activity logs by typing event.module colon 0365 and event.category colon file. We'll set the visualization type as bar vertical stacked. We'll set the horizontal axis as at timestamp, vertical axis as count of records, and we'll break it down by top values of event.action. We now have a high level overview of the file activity actions taken over time in our environment. We can look for anomalous activities such as spikes and file deletions or file downloads. So these logs should help us answer questions about our environment. If you find yourself repeatedly trying to answer the same questions, turn these queries into safe searches or visualizations and add them to a dashboard to speed up or even proactively conduct investigations. At Ironvine, we've followed this methodology to develop custom queries, visualizations, and dashboards to provide both a holistic overview and investigative drill downs that enable us to better monitor our Microsoft Cloud environments. Here's a sample of some of the questions we can now answer. Where in the world are users logging in from? 
Are they from countries we don't operate in but have logins that we could block? Who invited or added a guest user? You wouldn't believe how difficult it is to determine this without digging through multiple logs. What files are users sharing internally and externally and with who? Are their users uploading or downloading an unusually large amount of data? This could help tune your data loss prevention policies. What users does Azure AD consider to be risky and why? Typically, Azure AD alerts do not provide much context by themselves. Are there suspicious user agents attempting to log in? Where are they coming from? This data might inform conditional access policies. And which users receive the most suspicious mail? Where is this mail coming from? This data can help tune spam and phishing policies. We won't go over each of these queries in this talk, but we've packaged them into three dashboards that are freely available for download in our GitHub at github.com slash ironvine slash elastic dash M365. Please try them out for yourself and let us know your feedback. So this was a brief overview of how you can capture 365 and Azure logs and different ways you can use them to your advantage. If you're already an Elastic user, we encourage you to collect and analyze these logs for yourself. There's a wealth of data in these logs, and we hope this talk inspires you to consider your own use cases to find creative ways to gain insight and visibility into your own Microsoft Cloud environments. Thank you.